I was sexually harassed by a professor in the Department of Brain and Cognitive Science at the University of Rochester my first year as a graduate student. I left his lab and changed what I worked on. Uh, and uh, many years later, I became a professor in that same department. And it was called to my attention that his abuse hadn't stopped. For a number of years, I was chair of the Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences at the University of Rochester. After I left the university, one of my colleagues called me to tell me that a faculty member in our department had been for years sexually harassing the graduate students in the department and sleeping with a number of undergraduates and graduate students. We had complained about a colleague who was sexually harassing women students in our department. When the complaint was brought forward by myself and my colleagues, many other individuals, both in our department and in the university more generally, were extremely angry at us for bringing the case forward. It was as if for them, the most important thing was the turmoil that resulted from bringing the case forward. And they completely discounted the turmoil that the students were feeling as a result of the harassment that they, they had experienced. When you have so many people coming forward and saying, this happened to me, and there's so much overwhelming evidence that the sort of conduct we allege did occur, when an institution dismisses that, it really discourages people from coming forward. We trusted our university and followed all of the right procedures for reporting sexual harassment. And not only did they not do anything, they came after us for it. We filed a complaint through the normal university procedures, but they found him innocent and started retaliating against us. At that point, we needed lawyers. This was a university that clearly uh, was deeply affected by this case. When we issued our complaint in the EEOC, the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission, this became national and international news. It led to huge demonstrations. Uh, professors around the world said they would not send their students any longer to Rochester. The university went to great lengths to deny what had happened, certainly initially and despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. I think even their independent investigator, Mary Jo White, when she substantiated virtually all of the allegations we brought forward, she said um, that his conduct had been in the nature of sexually harassing acts, um, but had not violated the law. Um, the court ultimately disagreed with that assessment. We then went to mediation and were allowed to present statements. We were all in tears hearing each other talk about what we had experienced and the other side was in tears as well. We settled for $9.4 million. The university issued a thank you to us for calling attention to the failings of their own internal processes and we didn't sign any NDAs. If we had not succeeded, it would have been another example of an institution doing bad things and getting away with it. And we felt that the magnitude of the settlement was an indication to those outside the institution that this was serious enough and that if you persist and you're on the right side of the law, that you will win in the end. I can't believe that I almost concluded that there was nothing that I could do. I'm a changed person as a result of having gone through this process. I'm a stronger person uh, who's more empowered to do something when I see injustice than I was before. I don't know how much better the University of Rochester is. I do think that collectively, as a society, this case has played a role in creating the new normal and setting the standards for what sort of conduct we're willing to tolerate. To future victims who are considering taking action, I would say it's not an easy road. Um, but there are people who will support you. There, are, unfortunately, are very likely other people that it has happened to. And there are people like Dick Aslan and Alyssa Newport, people very senior in your field who absolutely do care. I recommend to people and potential clients, if you feel that an injustice has been done and you can't live with yourself by letting it continue, then talk to a lawyer. And if the lawyer says, we can help you, you know, strap your seatbelt and prepare for the ride.